The uh, third infantry is where the old guard is. It's the oldest, oldest active duty infantry unit in the army, serving our nation since before our constitution, uh, 1784. It conducts memorial affairs to honor our fallen comrades. Does all the, the funerals at uh, Arlington. Does a lot of greeting of dignitaries all over the world, uh, in, especially in the area of, of uh, the, uh, uh, the MDW, which is the uh, Military District of Washington. And what most people don't realize, it also provides defense uh, to a lot of the local areas. And because my particular company was A Company, uh, our first initial, uh, our first uh, uh, mission was to be the first line of defense for the President of the United States, for, as far as the Army was concerned. So here's an overview of the map. Isn't Google great? Um, a is Lincoln Memorial, so if you know that is a bearing point, you can run across the, uh, the bridge there, you're in uh, Virginia. And B is Arlington National Cemetery, and of course, uh, uh, Fort Myer. C is the Pentagon. Pentagon. Uh, D is Fort McNair, which is where I was stationed, way down at the tip there of the, the Anacostia River and the Potomac come together. And E is um, National uh, Airport, or Reagan, I think is what it's called now. This is a closer view of my particular post. It uh, has many really neat places on it. It is the third oldest post in the United States. And um, F is the National War College. G is the Industrial College for Armed Forces. H is the barracks I lived in, which was the very first federal penitentiary in the United States. Also the place that uh, uh, they hung the, um, the four conspirators for the Lincoln assassinations. And I is the, um, the South American uh, Defense College, or in other words, the Dictator School. <laughs> As, as uh, many people have mentioned, uh, there was a wonderful moving experience in being a, a, a sentinel. Uh, I was not able to be a sentinel because you have to be between 5'10 and 6'4. You have to have a 30 inch waist. You have to have absolute perfect eyes. Um, you know, on and on. And I did everything except I just weren't, wasn't tall enough. I was a half inch too short. So I couldn't do that. Um, it takes about six months to actually start your very first uh, tour. Um, and there are many, many traditions that go behind that. I was part of a firing party commander. I was part of a firing party and later became a firing party commander. They normally are eight people plus one. Eight are the seven people that actually fire the guns. The, the eighth is the actual shot sergeant. Uh, and finally, you have a bugler. They really stick to everything here. This is a photograph of my very first parade practice. Okay, and when we got back to the um, the barracks, um, I got talked to. I didn't have my eyes right enough, you know. But all those rep weapons, all those arms, everything had to be absolutely, completely parallel and straight. Uh, and they are real sticklers. And also, if you take a look at one of the uh, sergeants at the very bottom there, you see some clickers on his boots. Uh, all our boats had clickers on them so that when you actually made a right or left face or whatever, you hear one great big choo -choo. And if you heard a bunch of choo -choo 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 -choo, you were definitely in trouble. <laughs> we had many uniforms and many weapons. Um, I had just gotten there, so I had not been trained enough yet to do the, um, uh, the Doughboy program. Uh, but I was uh, qualified on a lot of different weapons, the uh, very antique, if you want to call it that, but an excellent weapon, the uh, 03 Springfield rifle, uh, the M1 carbine, the M14, which is what we lived with, the M16, M72, uh, M79 grenade, grenade launcher, M72 law, uh, 45 caliber, five different types of uh, shotguns, etc., etc. We were an infantry unit. And we had some fun, too. This is a dress down. Um, event where when you have the changing of the guard, or the chiefs said the changing of command, uh, you get to dress down, so we got a new platoon leader, and so we got a chance to, uh, to do that while everybody else had to be in uniform. And uh, the one in the corner there, um, I'm the one without the big ears. <laughs> but every year the old guard has a donkey baseball game, and all the proceeds of that go to local charities. Reveille. Anybody you know what Reveille is? That's at 6 o'clock in the morning, and we shoot off this enormous cannon. Actually, it's a howitzer. And the, right over the loudspeaker comes true the colors. So we are talking a real honest-to-goodness 
um, federal post. All right, and at five o'clock would be retreat, and that gun would go off again, and you'd play the national anthem. And I got a chance to do quite a bit of that, since I was a firing party commander, and we'd take our troops out there to make sure everything was good and clear. One year, someone decided they'd fill the barrel with golf balls, and they didn't clear it. And those balls took the roof off the NCO club, and went, went over the, uh, went over the uh, I think it was the War College, and then finally crossed the Anacosta River and made some pretty significant dents in the Naval uh, Reserve Station across the river. <laughs> Here is the uh, cover and the inside uh, comments of the very first um, invitation I got to the White House. I was in the White House a total of nine different times for nine different, or for a, four different events. One time I was there actually uh, for about five days. This is the drill team for the uh, uh, Old Guard, uh, world renowned, and part of Company E, and uh, they're just practicing here just before they get going. Now what they're doing is, if you take a look at the ones where there's one in the middle, there's four on the sides, they're flipping the rifles so that their bayonets actually cross from ear to ear, and go back the way, the nose to the head, go the other way. And those bayonets have to be completely straight. So there's, they have some work to do. The other one, which is actually much more difficult to pull off, is when you've got this uh, four columns, and the very first person, without looking where he's throwing his rifle, is throwing that rifle back toward the back. Everybody in front of him has to push their rifle forward, all right, and he has to catch it without looking at it. <coughs> and believe me, these all have bayonets on them, and this is a, a, an asphalt uh, area that they uh, go ahead and uh, practice in, and I've seen those bayonets stick right in the asphalt. So you don't want to be uh, there when that is the wrong time. And of course, the uh, 1812 Overture is always uh, nice to listen to when you have real guns. Parades, looking good. Uh, two haircuts a week. Sometimes you press your clothes twice a day if you run rotation. We had our own um, uh, press inside the building and our own barber inside the building, the barracks. Um, everything had to be perfectly great. Uh, you would actually uh, go ahead and take your combat boots, sand them down to the suede, and you put 21 coats of latex with your finger very nicely and slowly on them until they're absolutely completely shiny. All right. Uh, the uh, National War College, that's me, um, and of course a lot of CQ duty, CQ duty during the time period I was there. And practice, practice, and more practice. To be good, to do that the way they expect, you have to do a lot of practice. And uh, matter of fact, we were the, as I mentioned, on the uh, for the uh, Washington side of the river. So that means we had to take a bus over to uh, Fort uh, Meyer. And while before the actual event or whatever we were doing, okay, we couldn't sit on the bus because they were concerned that we'd go ahead and put a crease in our pants. I was also attached to, uh, for eight and a half weeks, to a presidential classroom for young Americans at the Shoreham Hotel. Um, and uh, I had a great opportunity to meet a lot of different people. And as you notice, there's a, a person you probably recognize, at least some of the older people may recognize. That's uh, General uh, William Westmoreland at that time, the Chief of Staff for uh, the uh, U.S. Army, and eventually becoming the Chief of Staff for all the Ar Armed Forces. You see the Chicago emblem there. One of the great things we got a chance to do at one of these programs is we had a lot of different entertainers come in, and we actually had the Chicago band when they were really hot come in. Um, and I got a chance to move their equipment around until I got a ticket, but not to some other story. Um, there was somebody about, uh, well, it was in April. Uh, someone came up to me and said, you know, you know, which is all excited, and you know who I'm talking about, don't, I, don't you, Lydia? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, she said, there's, there's Linda, Linda Hall knows you. She met you back when you were someplace in Washington, D.C. And sure enough, she was one of the classes. In those days, her name wasn't Hall. Um, but she was in one of the uh, presidential classrooms, uh, presidential um, uh, classroom programs back in 1971. 